dear councillors, welcome to the second uh, of our voting meetings, and also a warm welcome to those members of the public. Please be seated. to the matter in hand. Number three on the agenda item is the fiscal court. Uh, in the agenda papers, uh, obviously, uh, discussing the issues arising from the decision around the fiscal court. The attack includes the rep requisition notice and disabled notice of motion proposed by Councillor Blakely and seconded by Councillor Berry. Notice has been given of an amendment to respect of this item. This is set out, as you will see in front of you, Pages one and two of the agenda supplement. Uh, may I have a proposal and second to the Notice of motion item three B on the agenda.
many exchanges of emails, it became clear that all was not going well for the transition. We heard that promises made to staff were being uh, changed. The department urged staff to find alternative work and, and were told they would be reached with EBR. That was withdrawn. And then after our involvement was reinstated. Well, the staff who had found jobs, who were going to leave on the 30th of November, were told they couldn't. That means that their work of trying to find a job, that which they'd done, would have to be turned down. That was appealed. And that staff were told they could go. But only if they waived their right to pay the minimum notice. This is really a dignified and respectful way this council should treat loyal, caring, dedicated staff. Mr. Mayor Kerr has told us that although they had repeatedly requested outcomes from their one to one meetings, they had not received them, some eight or nine months on. They had also asked for confirmation that they would receive better days respite with the attorney's provision. For lots of them find their loved ones are not on the list for that. Mr. Mayor, this is particularly good when the four carers who had reluctantly worked with the council discovered that their loved ones were not on the list of their page respite. Mr. Mayor, if the cabinet member and the team can't get that right, then what faith can there be in this council to treat vulnerable people with dignity and respect? Well, I'm talking about dignity and respect, I will say we won't be supporting the Lib Dem members <coughs> because they say carers have been treated with dignity and respect. Well, not by this council, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Berry and I met with the Director and his Head of Service Delivery on the 6th of October. And during that meeting, the Director said, and I quote verbatim, this is a key learning point. It's clear distress is there. I have been telling you what I think it's supposed to be. So, Mr. Mayor, the Director is telling us, councillors, not how it actually is, but how he believes it should be. That is appalling. Outrageous. And it appears to us that it really is not only children's services that is inadequate. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, strangely, after we submitted the requisition for this council, Kenneth started to receive telephone calls asking if they wanted pet based respite. Staff was spoken to, and it appeared as if by miracle the cabinet members' department had finally awoken from a giant slumber. <laughs> and from that slumber, suddenly, we find that the original figure of 54 carers requiring bed based respite from the 110 jumped to 69. And Mr. Mayor, that is not because people have changed their minds, it's because they were miscategorised. Suddenly, from a description of equal to or better than, the provision changed from a 10 bed unit, 6 for respite, 2 for emergency, 2 for placement, to 8 for respite, 2 for emergency, and no placement. Mr. Mayor, as recently as 30 last week, I received an email from the director stating, and I quote, I can confirm that all of the 102 years of cold service users and their families that we're consulted with have an outcome. Mr. Mayor, I shared that with users, and I have details, uh, and a list came back showing that seven users, seven users had not received copies of the assessments, 15 have not received an offer of bed based respite, and another requested bed based respite despite being told they were not on that list. And there are two sisters who have respite together. It appears they're going to be split up. One can have their respite, the other can't. I've also shared emails and timelines with the director about other people who are struggling. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, it's clear for all to see that the decision to close the for court was the wrong one. To treat carers and staff in such an undignified, disrespectful way is, I'm sure, you will agree, unacceptable. It's not too late for the leader of the council and his disciples to see the end of their ways, step up and do the right thing. That, Mr. Mayor, is to keep care of course open. I urge council to support this motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
the, the reference to staff is on page two of the next to last paragraph. I think there's a distinction <coughs> there. What I want the council to appreciate or understand is that we, we take decisions about ending services in key locations, and I can think of them in there, and we may not as members do enough to follow up what happened to all the people and the families and the children involved. It is entirely surprised about the you know, facilities of the replacement services, and I've made a mental note to follow that up again. Because we raise points in debates about so the health care plans for the young people and the care plans for the use of our services, we have, to put it mildly, sometimes fallen out or have bitter disputes about this point of age, and then I don't know whether they're following and take it all. And therefore, the purpose, I think, of this constructive debate should be to look at what is happening. I will use the phrase that children in the back of the camera say, are we there yet? That is a question that I'd like to hear answered by the cabinet member. Thank you. People having respite, mixed up with long stay residents, and this wasn't right and what it turned out to be. I would suggest that if you want a holiday or a personal assistant to provide one to one care, then you can direct yourself and you should be entitled to it. Happily, people who have to do all these things do now have that choice. Almost one in three people who need respite have now chosen something different. So that, that was offered at virtual court, and that's one in three people. Mr. Mayor, I want to share a couple of facts with you. Um, I've changed the, the names, but the stories are actually real. Somebody called Andrew didn't really enjoy his respite. It wasn't suited to his needs. He wanted to be active and to enjoy himself, and that's all we could offer was six weeks at virtual court. That was until this year, and Andrew has now enjoyed a two-week activity holiday and is already making plans for his next one. So now he has choices. Another person we support has really complex needs and autistic spectrum disorder. The service at virtual court was fine, as we heard from the CQC report, but he wasn't suited to this person's need. This year, Autism Together is providing his respite services is more specialist and more appropriate and better for everyone involved. And let me tell you, Mr Mayor, about Jill. Jill is severely disabled and looked after full time by her mum, who is also starting her own business and needs some time to try and make a success of it. Jill has decided not to take traditional respite at virtual court, but instead uses her direct payment to hire a personal assistant. It has transformed her life and her mum's. Mr Mayor, let me sum up by talking about people who do want traditional respite care. And I emphasise the fact that they want it. They choose it, so they're getting it. Virtual court is being maintained until the new service is ready. And we know that the timeline has slightly slipped, but <laughs> it will be opened. And people at the moment who want to use virtual court are choosing it. 
and they can then transfer it over to the Tony Mash Road, which is a new, uh, more modern and appropriate to Not new. And it's a building in Cork which looks like an ordinary townhouse and not an institution. Yeah, it's a house, <laughs> that's it's why. It's part of the local community, it has good access to Colton, and it won't look or feel institutionalised. No, no parking, no parking. lots it of ramps. It will be to be part like of the local place. community. All rooms will be fully accessible and designed to maximise the homely feel. No, they won't, some of them have flips, and an slope ceilings. <laughs>
We weren't prepared to listen, we continue. And we would uh, urge the administration to listen. Because what service users and families are telling the Labour administration that these alternatives are not equal or better than Gertrude Court, and they clearly want the choice of using Gertrude Court. And Mr. Mayor, it's about time this Labour administration started listening.
in the gallery. Trust the staff to, at Gertrude Court. They don't mind going there every every year for so many weeks of the year because they like it. They feel safe there. They don't necessarily want to go to a state of the art fancy place which is being built in Tolly Mushroom where they can integrate with the people of Plot. And there's nothing wrong with the people of Plot, but those people don't know them. They want to be in an environment that they know. And we all know, Mr. Mayor, the worst thing you can do with vulnerable people is to change what they know and what they love. <laughs>
go to court and say they don't want residential provision, they want uh, holiday breaks, support at home. What and what Jordan? this uh, policy that we're pursuing will deliver is that choice which at the moment there is no choice. Moira is absolutely right, Chris is absolutely right. There's just one model, one size fits all. And in, this, in the 21st century, I'm afraid that's it's not good enough. That is just not good enough. So we know from, from the uh, detailed consultation taking place that one third of people want alternative choices. Two thirds don't. Um, the second point to make, Mr. Mayor and staff, uh, my uh, information is that from the very start, staff have been told they can either apply for EVR or move to a new facility. 34 are going on EVR, 7 are going to the new facility, including the manager, the current manager of Gershaw Court, and the deputy manager. So I think it's a good move forward. Um, so the reality is, Mr. Mayor, that we are, I think, responding to the need for greater choice. We are delivering, delivering this greater choice. I don't, I don't know whether Councillor Green has actually visited Tolly Road, the facility of Dr. Tolly Road. I have. It's very impressive. I believe it will be. You know, oh, it will be impressive. So I would really, I'd really invite like, rather than Castle Green uh, throwing kind of uh, hand grenades at the new facility, go and have a look, Jeff. I've had a look. We go, we go, we go. This is there. In, in conclusion, in conclusion, um, all the things that, that uh, certainly in the amendments, CQC, it will still be something.
globally and cancel the revenue of the speakers. At the moment, the new facility in Clawley does not meet the needs of all the people at Gertrude Court at the moment.